Hello, and welcome to my channel. Some people are born into families that are less fortunate. In that condition, they are forced to do whatever it takes to survive. Some can be patient and live with a minimum wage job, but there are others with less patience who prefer to take a shortcut and try to earn money the wrong way. This is a story about a man who preferred to take the easy way and took a risk that almost cost him his life. Now, let's begin our story. I was born poor, but I refused to be a beggar. So you could say that in a way, I could still maintain my dignity. The rich people of Mark's main city are too stingy to give a penny for the poor. I decided to do some thinking and took a bold action. If the people won't give me the money I need, then I will personally take it from them. Doing my job took practice. Luckily, I had many friends that would happily share their knowledge with me. The high unemployment number in Mark's main city resulted in the appearance of petty criminals. Like other professionals, some criminals are willing to share their knowledge. It will take a few drinks and cigarettes, but they'll talk eventually. Like many others, I started small. I was stealing wallets from tourists and other people who were unwary on the streets. I imagined myself as a wolf hunting for prey, and the streets were my jungle. Then I started stealing cars. It didn't last long. The competition was fierce, and I was relying too much on luck. Then I started robbing houses. It's amazing how people would easily post everything on social media. Holiday pictures only meant one thing, an empty house which is always an easy target. You could get more stuff from people's houses. You could find a laptop, a cell phone, some fancy clothes, and even some jewelry. It's like shopping, but you're the only person in the store, and everything is free. I started scouting for houses that looked luxurious. I tried to chat with various people I met and tried to get some info about the house that would be my next target. I had many friends on social media, and most of them were narcissists. They would share whatever it was they were doing to the world, even if it was just a picture of them drinking coffee in the nearest coffee shop. From the many chats I had online, there was one particular rumor that caught my attention and it was the house of the Cyclops girl. Rumor has it that 15 years ago a married couple moved to a house at Mark's main city. They had a baby girl with them, but the strange thing was, the people had never seen the baby in person. The couple never showed their baby to anyone else. The girl's face remained hidden to everyone, until one day the gardener sneaked into their house and took a peek into the cradle. He saw a horrifying sight of a little girl with only one eye. He was shocked and almost let out a scream. The girl's parents found out and gave him some money so that he wouldn't tell anyone about what he saw. He agreed to keep silent and took the money for himself. The gardener went celebrating with some of his friends, drinking at the local bar. He got a little drunk and started rambling about the rich little girl who only had one eye. Since that night, rumors began to spread about the girl that was nicknamed the Cyclops Girl. Several years after that, the one-eyed girl's parents passed away. Little was known about what happened to the girl, but it is said that the parents left most of their fortune for their daughter. They say that in the basement of the house are gold bars worth millions of dollars. But people believed that the treasure is cursed and haunted by the ghost of the Cyclops girl.
One guy tried to take the gold, but he came back with both eyes blind. He said that there was something inside the house. It wasn't a human being. It had sharp claws, and it attacked him on sight. It moved so fast, and its claws were slicing and dicing at his face. He barely managed to escape with his face intact. Personally, rumors don't scare me easily. It was obvious that the guy had some competition. He met some other guy who wanted to take the gold. They had a fight, and the other guy won. As for me, I always came prepared. When I finally decided to visit the house, I brought a flashlight, my handgun, and my trustworthy knife with me. The house was large and empty like a giant figure sleeping under the night sky. I jumped in over the fence and through the back door. Like many other empty houses, the house was dull and dirty. Not long after I entered the house, I found the door to the basement. Unexpectedly, the stairs to the basement were well lit. It was a clear sign that someone was still using the basement. I pulled out my gun and turned on the flashlight. When I arrived in the basement, I saw empty pizza boxes lying on the floor. I never saw a ghost before, but I never heard of a ghost ordering pizza delivery. Someone was living there, and if he didn't want to share those gold bars with me, then I didn't want to share them with him either. Then, in a dark corner of the room, I saw an old safe, sitting quietly as if it was waiting for me. Since I didn't see anyone else there, then I assumed that whatever was inside was mine for the taking. When I got closer, I found out that the safe was not closed properly. Unfortunately, it was empty. There was nothing inside but thick dust and spider webs. At that moment, I was beginning to think that coming to the house was just a waste of time. When I was about to leave, I saw a huge mattress on the other side of the room. Somehow I was attracted by it and decided to investigate. When I got closer, I noticed the sheets were a mess and there were a few candles burning near it. Between the candles, I saw a family photo consisting of father, a mother, and a little baby. I was never curious about family photos before, but this time, something felt off. The mother on the picture was carrying a baby, and the baby was wearing some kind of hoodie that covers the upper half of the face. Strange, usually people would show their child to the world, but it was as if they were covering something about the baby. I then aimed my flashlight around the mattress. Out of mere curiosity, I lifted the mattress and found the real treasure. There weren't any gold bars, but there were lots of cash under the mattress. I saw $100 bills, lots of them. You know what they say, beggars can't be choosers. If I couldn't find any gold bars, then cold hard cash was also fine by me. Suddenly, I felt something sharp cutting the skin on the back of my neck. I dropped the mattress and reached out behind my neck. I saw red liquid on my hand and realized that I was bleeding. I was entering self-defense mode and getting ready to shoot my gun. I heard footsteps moving around. There was someone else in the room, but he was moving too fast. I felt another sharp cut on my left cheek. My finger accidentally pulled the trigger, but I didn't hit anything. I felt another sharp pain. This time it was for my wrist. He was trying to disarm me. I was starting to panic and started shooting at random directions. Then I finally got a good look at my attacker. It was a girl, probably in her teenage years. 
She was wearing a red hoodie and a white dress underneath it. I saw her long hair flowing out of her red hood. Her face looked so skinny with protruding cheekbones. Both of her hands were holding some sort of kitchen knives, shining in the darkness. When I shone her face with the flashlight, I only saw one eye staring back at me. I wanted to communicate, but somehow I knew that it would be useless. I pulled the trigger once again, but my hands were trembling out of fear, and so the bullet missed. She began to move again, and her knives were swinging in front of me. I felt them slicing my face and my arms repeatedly. Out of pain and terror, I accidentally dropped my gun, and I started screaming for help. I turned around and tried to run away. I felt blood dripping from my face, and I felt excruciating pain from my hands. When I finally reached the stairs, I felt a strong grip on one of my shoulders, and it turned me around. I was face to face with the girl. Her face was hideous, like a one-eyed zombie. Her disheveled hair was seen covering her forehead. With one violent swing, her knife cut both of my eyes. The world went dark as I desperately tried to reach the stairs. As I was crawling up the stairs, I feared that the girl would drag me back into the basement. But fortunately, it didn't happen. When I almost reached the top of the stairs, I heard a voice calling to me. Come on, move it. It was a man's voice. I hesitated at first, but I didn't have a choice. Going back to the basement would be suicidal for me. Hurry, she won't chase you once you're out of the basement. I sensed that he was trying to help, so I followed instructions. He helped me get up and he continued to guide me until we left the house. He sat me down on the ground as I let out a groan of pain. An ambulance will come soon, he said. You probably heard about this house from the rumors flying around. Well, let me tell you, there aren't any gold bars here. Do yourself a favor and tell everyone to stay the hell away from this house. The girl you saw back there has been through a lot. I tried to keep everyone away from her, but it'll be a different problem when she finds you first. You're the gardener, aren't you? I asked him. Why are you still here? The man was quiet at first. I'm trying to make up for my past sins. I'm suggesting you start doing the same thing for yourself. I heard the sound of an ambulance in the distance. The gardener went silent and walked away, leaving me alone. When the ambulance finally arrived, they took me to the nearest hospital. After several days in the hospital, they finally returned me home, or at least what's left of me. I became a blind man who strapped in a wheelchair, almost unable to do anything by myself. I used to work to get my own money, but now I couldn't even walk straight without hitting a wall in my own house. Somehow, people knew about what I've done. The word on the streets is that I've visited the house of the Cyclops girl. A group of young men once came to my house. They wanted to know about the truth of the rumors circulating recently. They asked me a question. Did the Cyclops girl really exist? I became silent. A part of me wanted to tell them the address of her house, so that another thug would come there and end her life for me. But there was another part of me that felt sorry for her. The gardener was right. The girl has been through a lot. She was alone in the house, and probably she will remain alone for the rest of her life. She has already suffered enough and I don't need to add more to her suffering. Fool, I answered them. There was no girl, there was no money, 
I got into a fight with another thug and he sliced my face. The house was empty and there was nothing there. I think it's time for me to end this way of life. And if you're smart, I suggest you do the same. Some of them thought I was lying. I don't care. The gardener was right. A person must recognize his own sins. Hopefully by doing this, I can save the girl from other trespassers who could harm her. Let this be my own way of repenting for my sins, because I know that I will also live in the dark. Forever. And so, that concludes our story. In this world, none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes, but those mistakes don't necessarily define who we are. Learn from your mistakes and become a better person tomorrow. That is all for now. I will see you soon with another story. Thank you for watching.